Okay, back to it. Um, the original question that inspired all this series um, was about how to handle the social aspects of being parent. So I'm going to go back to that. Um, and again, I'm starting real early. So if you've got a young baby or toddler, um, one of the biggest issues is going to be family um, and dealing with your family. Um, I mean, I don't think that people are going to be as, uh, you know, in such an odd situation as me, which is um, that their parent found themselves homeless and decided to move in while you were pregnant. The chances of that are very rare, thankfully. Um, but you still have to cope with them. You know, the, the only person who ever tried to do the I'm going to touch your stomach crap thing with me, the only person was my mother who insisted on it. And she's like, okay, well, this is the, you know, again, she's caught up in the, this is what you're supposed to do. And so she did it. Um, yeah, you know, and, and other people, you know, because I wasn't married, um, I had relatives who were extremely concerned, you know, I mean, I was, uh, 29 years old when I was pregnant, so, but they were extremely concerned that people were going to see me, um, you know, and judge me morally, which is like, okay, so that's what you're doing. You're judging me morally. Um, that they kept telling me, oh, well, you know what? You don't even look pregnant. You just look like you've lost weight. You've gained weight. I'm like, that's a good thing. What? What? You know, especially when I was like, it to me, huge and having all the complications. I'm like, that's supposed to be a compliment. And then you have the baby and they have to be around. Now, I, on the one hand, and yeah, I had my crazy mother around, but I was lucky that I didn't have to deal with in-laws because uh, my son's father uh, was bored at the idea of being a parent and was not really interested in it. And so I didn't have to deal with that, his side of the family, thank God, because that can be even more annoying because you're still... You know, you've got all of the family in your face making assumptions about how they can interact with you crap. And at the same time, you're feeling judged because they're your in-laws. That seems like pure hell to me. Um, especially when you've got a baby baby, that's when you're going to... Okay, I'm, I'm like going to say, for me, that was probably, uh, other than the initial involvement with anybody, that was probably the hardest thing I had to deal with, with the, uh, um, with the avoidance, because I don't think you can do everything by yourself. I was really used to being very independent. You know, I moved to a city where I knew nobody completely by myself, totally did everything by myself. Super, super um, avoidant and independent. And I know there are people that are super avoidant and super dependent on the opposite side of that. Um, so, um, that was really insanely difficult for me to know that truly as much as I wanted to, I really could not do everything totally by myself. Being on bed rest when I was pregnant, I mean, I was supposed to stay in bed, get up to use the bathroom, get up to go to doctor's appointments. That was it and do nothing else. So it should have been a good thing that my mother moved in with me. But no, actually, um, because she decided that she was the guest. And was going to be treated like a guest. Even though she commandeered my house 
etc. Okay, so this isn't really helpful. This is me talking about my history. That's not helpful to people who are dealing with it now. Other than to, for me to say, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's hell. Yeah, I got through it. Okay? That, that's the thing, is that avoid people you think, oh my god, I cannot handle this. I can't handle my relatives. I can't handle anything. Um, I think that's the biggest the biggest thing I can do for people is to say, I got through it. I know other people that got through it that have kids my age. Um, and, and they were able to cope with all these stresses. With the family, again, I'm going to be repeating myself over and over again. Yeah, there are certain things you're supposed to do. You know, these are the way people operate um, guess what chances are what you think you're supposed to do is something that is a construct by your family it is not guaranteed it is not that every single person in the entire world is doing it the same way and if you don't believe me and and you want proof because again this is something that comes up with avoiding people they're like well, I have these ideas but it's not good enough if it's my own idea I need to have something to verify and back it up look at other completely different cultures do they do things the same way that you do no you know I mean you can totally go radical and look at indigenous people do they you know insist on having a baby shower I don't think so um, so you know and now they have all these stupid parties the gender reveal the all these other things People are expecting expecting you to do that. That does not mean you have to do that. And you don't actually have to give an excuse for it either. You can just say, you know, okay, this is like really stupid. Like really, I'm going to say something that I can't believe is coming out of my mouth. But what's her name? Um, Kylie Jenner just had this baby. And she, I mean, her job is to be in the media, and she didn't tell anybody. Everybody knew about it, but she didn't tell anybody. And her excuse was, it's best for me and my family. And I'm like, okay, there's precedence now. This, a lot of people with avoidant personality disorder, they need, again, they need something outside of themselves. They know what they need. They know that other people are telling them, well, you need to do this, that, and the other. They need to have somebody to sort of back them up. And, of course, they don't have people to back them up because they're avoiding by themselves. Um, so there's the precedent if you need it. Um, and the other thing that I was just saying in the last video, and I would really strongly keep this in mind, which is your feelings and your needs can change. So the first couple weeks... You might be like, I can't, can't do the relatives at all. And then the third week you might be like, the relatives are cool if they come to the house, hang with a baby, and I take a nap. And believe it or not, people are down with that. This is one of the biggest things that you don't sort of get as, um, you know, when you're trying to become a, a parent and it's really, really, really hard for people who are used to being the center of attention to grasp this concept once they become parents. This is difficult for them. This is awesome for people with avoiding personality disorder. Once you have a baby, people might judge you and try to tell you, well, you're doing this wrong because they want you to do it like they did and they're looking actually for validation of themselves. But they don't care about you at all anymore. Their focus is going to be like 99.9% .9 on the new baby. For real. And people won't even have anything else to talk about but the new baby. Baby, 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 baby. This is awesome. You are off the Hook. it's you know from now until the rest of time you've got something other than yourself to talk about 
And if you um, become a braggy type parent, and I don't mean like braggadocious, I mean the type who's like, oh yeah, let me tell you about this, that, and the other. I don't know if for other, I, I'm pretty sure because um, I've seen this uh, basically across the board. So, I mean, I, you know, I've talked to lots of people that are avoidant and people that have kids my age, etc. Um, and, but I haven't talked to everybody on the planet, obviously. Um, basically, they don't mind talking about their kid. It does not trigger the avoidance to talk about your kid. You can sometimes feel like, oh, well, I'm not doing the best by them, and that that, um, that comes in, but that is different and separate from when you're interacting with people. I don't, I don't know exactly how this happens and why this works, uh, but it's great. It's awesome. It gives you, it, the, it's hard to explain. The avoidance goes away when you're talking about your kid. So you have relatives come over. They want to be treated like, you know, it's the greatest thing on the planet. Um, but you have this like ready excuse right then and there. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't pay attention to you. I have to take care of the baby. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell you what I'm doing in my life because my entire life is the baby, um, or the kid or whatever. From now until the end of time, you are off the hook. They want to hear about the baby. It's awesome. Um, keep that in mind. Yes. Being around people, um, is draining and terrible. If you have a partner, this is really sick. You're probably going to want to kill me. When my kid was 13 or 14, um, I was at a family party and my son came in and rescued me. He could tell. And he's like, okay, mom, I need you for something. I was like, what do you need? He's like, I need you to get away from that person. I won't stop him to talking to you. I was like, oh my God, child, <laughs> you are awesome. You are so fantastic. But even when you have a little baby, um, your partner can do that. I mean, I was alone. I was single straight from the start. Um, so it's a little harder if you don't have a partner or somebody that can step in and have a clue for you, but definitely use them. Um, yeah, cat doesn't like door shut. Anyway, um, so it's not as bad as you would anticipate. Once you have a baby and you can have all the focus go on the baby, even like your gnarliest relatives, it's slightly more manageable. Um, because even if they're not focusing on the baby, you can get away with focusing a hundred percent on your baby and people will accept that. So it's like, it's, it's hard, it's hard to put this in a, in a way that's like not seeming so completely, utterly manipulative and awful, but it's the truth. It really is the truth. Um, especially the younger they are, I am repeating myself. I told you I would repeat myself. The younger they are, the easier it is to handle relatives. You might get crap from friends might get crap from friends and I'm sitting here as so the words come out of my mouth. I'm like, you know, there are avoidant people with friends. Um, I'm not one of them, but they exist. So your friends might be like, okay, can we talk about something else? And, um, no, I can't. I've got a year or two where I've got nothing else to do. And if you, you know, as, as awful as it is to have somebody leave you, well, you know, you've got, the baby is going to take up all your time, so you really don't have time for your friends anyway. So, I mean, it does suck to have people leave. I'll tell you that, yes, it's horrible to lose a friend. But, you've got a new friend, a baby. Um, in, in, you know, as far as initially with the people that are already in your life, yeah, they're all going to want to see the kid or whatever, but you do not have to put pictures of them up all the time and you do not have to interact with them and you've got a ready excuse. <gasps> I think the baby's coming down with a cold. Oh, well, I'm going to leave you alone then. Um, 
happens fantastically all the time. It's easier than you would imagine uh, when they're younger to deal with the social aspects. Um, they have void personality disorder. 